about four months ago, I got rid of my Jeep and got this pickup instead because I felt it would better suit my needs. Bye bye old Jeep. Here it is, my new wheels, or at least new to me. It's a Chevy Silverado 1500 2011. What I was looking for was something that had enough space so I could pick up supplies and lumber. There's so much I can store here, but for the cabin, I mean, there's so many materials I still have to buy. Now I can get them myself with the truck. I don't have to get delivery and they're stored away from the elements. But was powerful enough to tow a trailer. Under the hood is a 5.3 liter V8 engine. It also had to be rugged enough for the back roads because I wanted to use it for travel. And should I decide not to bring the trailer? Big enough and comfortable enough that I could use it as my camper. Now back here, the bed is about six feet, six inches, which is actually perfect for a bed. But it also had to be a vehicle I could actually afford. I don't want to go in debt. I have a very fixed budget. I think I got a good deal on it. I paid uh, 10,000 Canadian which is about, uh, I think around 7,400 US dollars. Now there was one more thing on my wish list, and that is I wanted more than the Jeep could offer me. However, I did not want to compromise on fuel efficiency. What I expect to happen, or what I hope will happen, is I'll end up, yes, with a bigger engine, but a more efficient one. I wanted a vehicle that would at least get the same as the Jeep, or perhaps even better. And of course, that was the biggest challenge. A lot of the time people will challenge my ideas and I'm 100% okay with that if they do it respectfully. Now, of course, being on YouTube, I had my share of critics that kind of scoffed at the concept of how could you think taking an old beat up pickup truck and it would actually be more efficient than your Jeep in towing. But one person was polite enough to just simply ask what my reasoning was. I think because this is a six speed, I could actually get better gas mileage than I could with the Jeep, especially with towing. And that's how I responded. And he replied back, I will respectfully disagree about you getting better gas mileage with the truck versus the Jeep. Now it seems this particular viewer was pretty adamant that there was no way I was going to reach that goal. So I asked him, would you like to make a bet? Uh, not for either of us, of course, for charity, for a food bank. So what I did is I went into my gas receipts that I've had recently, especially in my trips to the east in the US, and I found one when I was towing, I think it was in Pennsylvania, that I got 15.1 miles per gallon. So the challenge is, that was with the Jeep, can I get better than the Jeep and get better than 15.1 miles per gallon? And with that over and done with, all I had to do was hook up the trailer and start traveling. My first week took me through a gauntlet of weather and road conditions. But when I made it to Florida, I sat down and did a little assessment. Oh yeah. And I went through all my receipts 
and the range was between 11.1 miles per gallon and 12.2. So I still have a long way to go, but it's only been a week, less than a week of driving. I've got a long way to go. I'm sure there's some way I can at least improve it a little bit. After Florida, my first challenge was Houston. I'm flying through here at 70 miles an hour just because I have to go with the flow. Then the sands of Padre Island. My second assessment was at Falcon State Park in Texas. I think my range for this, this section is between 10.6 as the low and 13.1 as the high. I'm getting there, you know, a couple more miles per gallon and I'll have won, but uh, it's kind of tough. Well, this is certainly the road less traveled. I haven't seen a car pass me either way for about half an hour. This was my ill-conceived shortcut route. But I made it to the foul waters of the Holloman settling ponds. Well, hopefully, I won't grow a third eye in my forehead being so close to that toxic water, but I am leaving in the morning, so I should be okay. But it's time for an update on the performance of the Slimerado. Uh, when I was east of Fort St Stockton, Texas, uh, I guess I was fighting a headwind, 10.9 miles per gallon. Ooh, that's bad. Uh, Zapata Highway, Laredo, Texas, I got 11.2, a little bit better. Uh, Cloudcroft, New Mexico. Uh, that's just up in the hills. That's where I got stuck in the snow. 12.1 miles per gallon. Uh, Sonora, Texas, 12.2 miles per gallon. Oh, here we go. Del Rio, Texas, 13.2 miles per gallon. I think that's better than the last one. And look at this, 13.5, and that was coming into Van Horn, Texas. So my current low is 10.9, and my current high is 13.5 miles per gallon. I'm getting really, really close. Stay tuned. Now here's where it got interesting because after I left the Alamogordo area, I had to go up a mountain pass. Over those mountains there, the Oregon Mountains near Las Cruces. However, when I got to the other side and I got to a gas station, something had changed drastically. Well, I'm in Deming, New Mexico, and I think I got really good gas mileage, but I won't know until I finish pumping. 372.2 kilometers in the miles per gallon calculator, 15.44 US gallons. The result, are you ready? 15.0. I am 0.2 miles per gallon off my goal. That is fantastic. I'm almost there, but not quite. I just passed the Continental Divide. All rivers run west now. This is a good section of uh, I-10 to uh, give me an idea of gas mileage. However, there's a wind from the west, so I'm fighting a headwind. I don't think I'm gonna get my best gas mileage here. I guess I'll find out when I get into the Tucson area. I'm in Benson, Arizona, uh, filling up the tank. I think I got good gas mileage. If I get under 11.4 gallons in this fill, I think I've won. I'm at 10, 10.6, 10 10.7, 10 there's 11.3, oh, 
close. 11.992. Well, I'm gonna do the calculation anyway because maybe I was wrong. It was 11.992 gallons. 11, let me just see, 11. 0.992 oh, it says 15.1 now can you see that let me just see hopefully you can see that what does that mean I have tied the Jeep I only need 0.1 more miles per gallon if I get one mile per gallon better or 0.1 is, is all I need. I've won the competition. So I'm kind of happy about that. It's got to happen. Well, I was really, really happy that my engine performance seemed to be improving because when you look back, it seemed every stop, it was getting better and better. I mean, the first time, you know, when I just started off, my best performance was 12.2 miles per gallon. Then it went to 13.1 to 13.5 and all of a sudden 15.0 and 15.1. What had changed? And uh, the, I mean, the only thing that I had done was when the tailpipe bent, it's that bend that's not very good. Uh, I had the end cut off. Is that the reason? I'd also changed the oil in Stockton, Texas, as I had been doing every 5,000 miles. Or were there other factors in there? And I thought about it. I had, when I left on the trip, I was at sea level. And uh, as I gradually, you know, went down, Florida and then went up and finally into New Mexico, I was more at 4,000, 5,000 feet above sea level. Could that affect the engine performance? Don't know. And the other thing I had to think about, what about the gas? Was I using winter gas at the beginning? Were there special additives that reduced the performance? When I got down here where it was nice and warm, was the gas actually better? I don't know. Gas has gone up. But there was one more thing I wanted to try, and that was under the hood. A visit to a garage near Tucson alerted me to a random misfire on the spark plugs, so I changed out the old plugs, wires, and coils for new ones. Here's all the parts I took out, including that one spark plug that I broke in half. I'm gonna clean this stuff up and I'll see if the engine's going to start. It runs! I don't know if it's better or worse, but it runs, so at least I can get out of here. Whoa. Oh, I'm going sideways here. I'm at a truck stop uh, just west of Phoenix. This is my next gas stop. And I'm wondering if this is going to be the one that's going to win me the bet. Didn't use a lot of gas. I think the uh, replacing the spark plugs, the wires, coils did help. But how much did it help? That's what I'm waiting to find out. Right now it's at 11 and a half gallons. There we go. 12.007. 
So how did I do? It was 12.007 gallons. The uh, kilometers was 303.4143. Tried to be as accurate as possible. What does that come out to miles per gallon? Let me just see. Okay. Listen to this. 15.7. 15.7 miles per gallon. That means I won the bet. I could do better than 15.1 miles per gallon on this old beater truck. There were doubters. I was confident I can do it. And I just did. Yes. Now I'm sure somebody's going to ask if changing spark plugs made such a big difference, why didn't you get it done before you went on your trip? I accept the challenge, but I'm not traveling yet. So, and I, I also haven't had the, uh, the engine tuned up. Well, the thing is I did take it to a garage. One of the problems with rural garages is uh, you ask them to do four things and they only do two. So I've got another appointment. It takes like two or three weeks to get an appointment with these guys to get the engine improved on. Hopefully, you know, change the spark plugs, whatever it needs, improve on the engine. So we'll see how that goes. And they said they looked at the spark plugs. They were brand new. Somebody had already done a tune up. So they did nothing. Not being a mechanic myself, I'll ask my viewers. Does the spark plug on the left look new? I think when I get back, I'm going to be getting a new garage. Although the bet had been won, the story wasn't over because I had to find out if the person who had accepted the challenge actually made a donation to a food bank. I mean, there's a lot of doubters out there, believe me, but when they're proved wrong, a lot of people all of a sudden go silent. But in a few days, I got an email and it had this picture on it. Here he is with his bags of groceries donating to a local food bank. Now I can't give out his name, but let me tell you, he was a gentleman, he was a good sport, and he was a very sincere person. And he's made a lot of people happy. And uh, by the way, uh, if there's anybody else out there that uh, had doubts about whether I would win or not, it's not too late to donate to a food bank. As a matter of fact, I kind of feel left out myself. Some grocery stores actually have prepackaged bags for food donations. However, this one didn't, so I had to select them myself. It had to be non-perishable items such as canned goods, dried foods, cooking items, and condiments. But my challenge was what to give when I don't know what others want to eat. So I ended up buying what I would probably like rather than choose stuff I didn't know anything about. I didn't fill them all the way to the top because uh, they're all cans and these bags are gonna rip, rip but, yeah, and they are ripping too, but uh, anyway. $115 worth of groceries should help a little bit. Okay, drop off. It was a little hard to find this place. <laughs> I uh, I don't know Las Cruces at all, but this is a food bank. Hopefully somebody's gonna come up and pick up my food. My donation, I should say. Today? No. Alrighty. We'll use 
this today to get one of those in need. Yeah, I see you've got a lineup up there. Yeah. Hungry people. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Oh, there it goes. I got to tell you, this feels really good. I love win-win situations. I mean, I get something out of it because uh, I get to donate, make people happy, and somebody will have a meal today. Hopefully several people. Now I hope everybody understands that it really made no difference whatsoever who won or who lost. It was all about trying. It was about having a goal and not being discouraged, especially if it gives you the opportunity to improve, to grow, and to learn. And I think I did, and I definitely improved my gas mileage. I'm not done yet. I've got a few other things I want to try, so stay tuned. Sometime in the future, we're going to talk about this again. I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, <laughs> scraping my sides of my truck. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my others as well. Who knows where I'm gonna end up next. Ouch.